Kia ora. So I'm going to be working through some PowerPoints that we've written for our students to guide them through the multivariate data investigation. Um, this is the way we do it at our school, and I'm sure there's lots of different ways to make sure that you are listening to what your teacher says and following their instructions. Um, so first of all, we're going to look at the problem and the plan. In this video, I'm going to work through the question. So I'm going to be using the data set from NZ Graffer, um, which is Jake Wills' site. Thank you, Jake. And I'm looking at the one that has got rugby players' information. So we've got some variables there, New Zealand versus South Africa positions, forward position in a rugby team and a back position in a rugby team. If you don't know much about rugby, you have to often find out what you want to, what, what it's all about before you start writing your question. Then there's the weight of the players in kilos and the height of the players in metres. So I have decided to go for the height of the backs versus the forwards. So we're trying to compare two groups and one number. So in this question, I've gone, I wonder if the height in metres of rugby backs tends to be taller than the height in metres of rugby forwards from the 2013 Springbok and All Black squads. So I'm comparing those two groups, my numerical variable, which is the height in metres, categorical variables, which is backs versus forwards. You must have that phrase tends to in there because we can't be absolute about it. When we're talking tends to, we're saying in general, rugby backs will be taller than rugby forwards. Um, and state the direction, so taller than, and mention the original population and the year. So 2013 Springbok All Black squads. All right. Um, so this is the question I've gone for. I've actually decided to switch it around and do forwards versus backs. So for 2013, do Springbok and All Black rugby forwards tend to be taller than rugby backs? This is the question we'll be using at our school. So it's got the numerical variable. It's the weight implied by taller and metres. It's got the categorical variable, which is the forwards and the backs. Has that tends to um, or tend to be taller? And states the direction, that's the taller than, and mentions the original population, which is the 2013 Springbok All Black Rugby Players. We need a year because things change every year, so we need to be make sure, making sure that the data group we're talking about has a year attached to it because it's a sample of a bigger population. So for our opening paragraph, we want to have our question first of all and make sure that our question is set and then we need to have a few other things that we want to make uh, that are clear so that we know what our topic is about. So it's a good idea to hypothesize or to make a guess as to what you think is going to be the answer to your investigation. So in this case, I think that forwards are going to be taller than backs, and that's why I've gone for that way round. You want to think about who might want to know this question or who this investigation might be useful for. So maybe it would be useful for um, a player deciding what position in rugby they're going to do, or maybe it would be good for um, somebody making clothing. I don't know. And use all the data that's available to you. So you've been given a sample, and that sample is your data set, and you don't sample from it. So you're going to use all of the data that is given to you. Now, cleaning the data, you can sometimes decide to clean out some values or not, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And the last thing is you need to say where your data has come from. So your hypothesis. I think that forwards would be taller than backs because they're usually bigger players as they need to contend in the lineouts. So that was very simple, just small, giving an idea on what you think is going to happening. You can use your own personal knowledge or you can use research if you like. When cleaning the data, there are two situations. The first one is extreme values, and the second one is outliers. Extreme values are values that are actual value um, data points, so they're reasonable data points, but they're quite a long way away from the majority of the data. So, for example, you might have a rugby player that's been listed 2.1 metres tall, which seems enormous but believable. Doing some research on, online, I found that the tallest professional rugby player was recorded as 2.13 metres. Therefore, the value of 2.1 is valid and would be called an extreme value and not removed from the data set. Outliers are values that are not believable or where you feel like something has happened. So it could be a recording error or a typo in a data set 
Sometimes you can fix these if you really know what has happened, but most of the time we remove these values because they have an adverse effect on our analysis and our investigation. And when we write our data, we're just saying, where has it come from? So the data for rugby players' heights has come from the rugby web, from a rugby website and is real data for the 2013 players from New Zealand and South Africa. Um, the weights, which should say heights, were in both imperial and metric measurements, and we have used the metric measurements. Okay, so I've got one here ready for you to go. You can do this on your own. So in NZ Graffer, there is a data set about marathons. You're given the amount of minutes they complete the marathon in. You're given a gender, male versus female, an age group, younger and older, and a stride length. So that's the average stride length over the whole marathon in centimetres to investigate. Thank you.